Welcome to On the Road with Riley. I'm Riley Mulherker, and we're here, episode 12, finally going to the mountain time zone. It's taken us long enough. We're going to the beautiful city of Denver. I love Denver so much. It was actually one of the places I was most recently on the road, literally, before lockdown, before quarantine, before this whole COVID era set in. Now I get to go back virtually and check in with a good friend of mine, wonderful pianist and educator, Don Clement. She's out there. She moved to Colorado just a couple of years ago, but she's become such a part of the community out there. And um, I actually haven't gotten to chat with her in a long time. So I'm looking forward to catching up and seeing what's going on with her and what's going on in Colorado. Don. Hey, how hey. are you? <laughs> so nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for having me, Riley. Absolutely. I, I'm, it's long overdue that we get to your time zone, that we get to your state, that we get to your city. Um, so t- tell me a little bit about what brought you out to Colorado. And I'm sure when you came out there, you didn't expect the time that you may be having right now. So uh, just, you know, drop me into your life right now. Tell me what's going on. Yes, you're absolutely right. I, I think um, we've experienced, or I've experienced two challenges really. Moving out here two years ago, I moved to take over the Jazz and American Improvised Music Department at Metropolitan State University. And it's such an honor to drop in on something that Ron Miles created um, back in 2013, I believe. Mm. And, uh, you right. know, after- can I give a Ron Miles plug? <laughs> He's my favorite living trumpet player, just a legend in a, in a Denver, another Denver uh, native and, and local. Absolutely. My role is the coordinator of the Jazz and American Improvised Music Department, and I, I co-coordinate that with Dave Devine. He's a wonderful guitarist here. Um, and I, it's new for me in a lot of ways. Like I said, two challenges. There's an administrative aspect to the job that um, requires new skills, and then there's also COVID. So just as I was getting my feet wet and figuring out what um, the the job really looked like, the first year is kind of a blur, right? Second year, I was diving in and um, looking at what the students needed and what direction the program needs to go and what we want to implement. And then COVID hits. So that was a big adjustment too. how to best serve the students. That's my main priority all the time is what's best for students. Well, on that note, I mean, when we first started this series, it was all about schools shutting down for the year. And then, you know, summer has gone by like a blur. And now everyone's talking about how are we going to educate all of, you know, the children in this country in the fall. And Mm -hmm. you're sort of on both sides of the equation. You're a mother. And so, you know, I feel like so often this debate is between what about the parents versus what about the teachers and you're both, you're a teacher and you're also a parent. So what is it like, you know, as this whole national conversation is going on, what is it like to be on both sides of that? And, and how are you coping with it? I, I can definitely relate to both sides. Um, and I've been a part of a couple debates on Facebook. I'm embarrassed to say, <laughs> um, you know, when we first went into it, I, I thought, okay, I'm homeschooling, we're home, we're doing this. Um, And summer has progressed and my kids need a little bit of social interaction. And the schools here all provided something different. They offered um, different options. Districts did different things, but our district offered a hybrid and online and a a full-time. So we weighed our options and took the survey and we were doing a, a hybrid. So my kids are there Monday, Wednesday. As a teacher, I feel less comfortable being in person. Um, Metro decided to be all online with the exception of ensembles. So we've kept our ensembles down to five or six people and they meet twice a week in the biggest rooms. We've got vocal masks. We've got uh, a wipe down process. We've got mics you can check out. Um, We put big big band on hold and I'm gonna take this semester to write and arrange for them. So we'll see how it goes. Today's really the first day of ensembles. 
So today's literally the first day. Yeah. I mean, we started last week, but ensembles and lessons start today. Well, well, good luck, and, and you know, wishing you all the all the best in terms of health and safety. Thank you. Um, of course, and I mean that sounds like so much to juggle, just in terms of figuring things out, uh, both on the family side and the professional side, the teaching side of things. Meanwhile, of course, you know, you're a musician, and you have your needs, and you have your process, and everything that you're working on. How have you managed to balance that, or, or what has that even looked like in these past few months? I'm going to be real honest. I've had uh, a roller coaster of emotion in regards to my creative process. Mm -hmm. I have felt very stuck during this time. I felt discouraged. But the truth of it is, um, there's still been something happening. There's still been um, something being created. And my goal going into it, I had a list of things. I thought, well, this is the perfect opportunity. I'll do all these transcriptions I've been meaning to do. I'll write a bunch of new songs. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, uh, 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 and then wham, right? It sunk way down. Um, but I referred to that list and tried to do a little bit to keep it going. I talked to a lot of friends, um, kept in touch with students because we're experiencing that, but the students are experiencing that too. It's like, you know, we're so motivated by getting to play with other people. And that's what we're learning to do by taking class together, you know, plugging in all the theory and ear training in the ensemble. Mm -hmm. Which is why we kind of fought to keep that in person. But I think my hardest thing ending last semester in spring was staying up and positive for students when I was not feeling that for myself. I was feeling as an artist, what am I doing? Why does this matter? Mm -hmm. and, and the longer COVID went on and the less people are going out and the more used to they're getting not going out to hear anything or, you know, I thought, well, is this an obsolete thing? You know, even if it comes back, is it going to come back in full swing like it was? And I still have that conversation with myself. Um, and I just am holding out hope for it to come back and have a new look and whatever that is to feel supported by other musicians and everyone else. You know, we're all struggling and going through the same thing. And then, I mean, I, I, yeah. I so appreciate that honesty because I've, I've had that, those ups and downs too and those questionings about what is our role and, and how do we serve this moment, but also you know, I remember when all this set in, I saw some article online about Charlie Parker and how he uh, went out to the Ozarks and shed for 12 hours a day. And it was like, this is your opportunity. And I said, hold on. First of all, that's actually a myth. He went to a lounge and had a residency and the lounge was called like blah, 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 Ozarks Club. So he wasn't in the woods and he was playing with other human beings. And second of all, that's not what this is. This is a global pandemic. And I think we need to be honest with ourselves and take care of ourselves and look out for our community in all these ways and check in with each other, like you were just saying, and like we're doing now. I think yeah. that's such a big part of it. I'm wondering, you know, since, since we're here together, uh, can we play a tune together? Is there anything that you, you know, had in, in your mind, stuck in your head through these days of quarantine? <laughs> well, let's see. Maybe we could play something reminiscent of pre-COVID. Do you play I Remember April? Well, I do remember April, but <laughs> April, I was actually just recovering from COVID in April and things were locked down and it feels like not much has changed since April. So I remember April because it feels like we're still in April. <laughs> Doesn't it? Oh my gosh, it's a little hotter, I have to say. It is a little hotter, for sure. Uh, actually, time is progressing at a scary pace, yet it still feels like April. So I certainly remember it. That's, I think that's a perfect song. Let's jam on a little I'll Remember April. And, you know, I was just talking about all the great trumpet players in Denver. I was thinking I could loop in one of my trumpet heroes, Shane Ensley, uh, see if he can join in, jam a little bit with us. I'm sure he remembers April as well. <laughs> Let's do it. Cool. Thank you, Don. Thank, Thank you for you. hanging out with us today. And uh, 
we send our love to Denver. It's wonderful to see you. And here it is, Don Clement, Shane Ensley, I'll remember April. Thanks, Riley.